Wow, the heat here. Well, welcome to another wee video of DC Vigilante's wee rant. And it's, and it's going to be a rant, and it's going to be something that a lot of people are not going to like, but you have to admit, everybody's just due their opinions. You know, if you go to a channel called DC Vigilante, then you know it's going to be something maybe you're not going to like to hear unless you're big on DC. Um, now, in my last video, uh, Sazam lights out sort of thing, uh, I made a statement saying that I'm off my, my Facebook page and I've took a, I'm taking a long time to go back on social media and stuff like that and it's been brilliant and I've closed my ears to the world. But that doesn't stop things like the radio. So I'm in my work and I hear my, the radio going on and they talk about Avengers Endgame. And they mentioned that Avengers Endgame is now number one, uh, the most, you know, film that got most money and stuff like that, you know. And, but then he goes on and saying, you know, it just overtook Avatar, but if Avatar came out today, you know, because of the inflation of the money, then Avatar would still be on top. Now that isn't for me, but that's... That's nice to hear, you know, because we, we forget that, you know, as the years go by, you know, money-wise and the value of things differ. And, and what I've said many times in videos is what I'm going to say again on this one, because you never know who will watch this one and who didn't watch the last one and stuff, is that just because of, right, Avatar came out, right, I went to see it. Didn't think too much of it. I thought it was like dances with will set in space. And but at the time, everyone was going to see it. I saw it in the IMAX. I saw it, uh, 3D goggles and stuff like that because I thought, oh, this, this, because the way it was advertised, you're going to see so much in this film that you haven't done before. And that's what advertised does. It it, it draws you in. It, it grabs you uh, and brings you in to go and and make you feel that you need to see this life-changing movie. And then you could say the same, but but, but because that was a one-off, you know, there was no other film like that before, there was not a sort of lead-up to that movie. You know, so you can give it credit for that. This came out and then it was a big success. Now, you take The Avengers Endgame, which took so many movies to get to the point. You know, it, it, it took a lot of movies to, to get to the point. Uh, uh, and so people felt they, they had to see this, because this was the end chapter of of like 10 years. And so they felt they had to see it, and I've seen... Uh, and, and it, but just because a film makes it number one doesn't mean it's the, you know, the greatest film ever. It just means that, for me, my personal view on it, it just means, and it does not mean that everyone on the planet has seen it. Because if it did mean that, then that would have said that I've seen it, which I haven't. I haven't seen Marvel movies in the cinema for a long time. I mean, I think the last Marvel movie I've seen in the cinema was Avengers. Then I stopped. You know, I ended up seeing it on Netflix or something, something I wouldn't, you know, pay to see. So, uh, it was, but just because people go in to see it, you know, they, a lot of people see it for a second time, a third time, a fourth time and everything else. And, and But that doesn't make the film good, it doesn't make it great. It just makes the film, you know, you know, people measure it by by the money if that's a success. Well, of course they would, you know, they would, would do that. It's just, it, it, but you can put that onto the campaign, the campaign was good for this. And the campaign for that was, we are now coming to the end game of 10 years. You need to see this before it gets spoiled. You know, so we've got to see this in the cinema before somebody tells us. And people were attacking everybody because they were getting told the ending of Avengers. Heck, I did it once. Um, not, not attack, but I got sort of spoiled the ending. 
uh, even though I've never seen it and not likely to see it. But they said that to me is my given right. Okay, we have so many videos out there of people trying to be unbiased and say that they'll go and see it and they'll like it and everything else and go and see it. But, you know, for me it's, it's like cheese. I don't like cheese. It doesn't matter what, 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 how you package it, I'm never going to like it. And just because the majority of this planet loves cheese, doesn't mean I think it's going to be the bee's knees. I don't think, you know. And for me, it's the politics behind it. I was talking to someone today and they mentioned, oh, have you seen the Lion King? And I went, no. No way, I'm finished with, I'm finished with Disney. I don't like the politics. I don't like what they've, they've done to the, the film franchise and stuff like that. And the Lion King, they, they, when, was the, when did they last have an original thought? As far as I know, they've spoiled the end of Toy Story. Sto uh, they've spoiled the end of Toy Story by this fourth film. Um, and then again, it says basically the guy says the Lion King was like word by word, scene by scene. Well, yeah, I'm watching the same movie. It's, uh, that doesn't intrigue me. You know that that would bore the life out of me. You know to see it, and I says that's the. And I'm thinking, and I've said this many times, that the world is dumbing down. And of course this guy brings this other guy over to me and and uh, he got me to talk about the Snyder Cut on which you've never heard. He saw BVS, couldn't get into it. And of course that got me riled and, and I started explaining BVS, I started explaining the Snyder Cut and everything else. And um, Poor guy couldn't wouldn't let it go, you know, I, I don't know if you said walk away, but no, I was I was going to say what, what I felt, you know, uh, you know, because these people don't understand the the politics behind movie making and, you know, and they don't care, they just want to see a movie, and, I'm, and one guy says, oh, just because you don't like it doesn't mean, I'm not saying that at all, you know, I'm, I'm not saying just because I don't like something, and I'm saying it's it's the bad film, it's the worst film, and everything else. Have you enjoyed it? Good, but you you also got to respect that I I don't like it. Not only do I not like it, I hate the the company behind it. I hate what they've done when it comes to the Rotten Tomatoes. I hate what they've done with Kevin Feige and how they treated Edward Norton and the, and the Hulk. Oh yeah, he gave him a hard a hard time. It wasn't just a oh. Artist different. Oh, he lied. Kevin Feige lied. And what you've got is you've got these two directors who are talking about in Infinity War and stuff like that and Endgame. And where did you think the Marvel Universe will go? And Film Gub, he 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 said it right. You know, he put all these batches together. And all they could think of was how to make a movie. I should be hearing funny, 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 funny. That's the only thing that all these people are, say is in common. And these guys have probably not going on with the Marvel Universes because they may be already sick of Kevin Feige's um, controlling. And let's face it, before Infinity War and all that sort of stuff, or Civil War, whatever, nobody's ever heard of these, these two guys. It's because Kevin Feige got people that he could control and, and make the way. And, and when you, and you look at these movies and you look back at BVS, and if you're not gutted the fact that you're not going to get Marvel movies aren't going to be as deep and dark and uh, uh, and unique and its storytelling as BVS was and you're just going to get the same formula every day it really makes me worried you know I mean that just means they can dish out a lot more crap day in and day out and people are just going to suck it up now you can say, ah oh, well the majority of people love it, just because you don't like it, but the majority of the world love it and, that, and everything else, uh, and oh you're just butt hurt and everything else, and well, I'm too right, I, I'm bloody butt hurt. Because I, because like so many of my other friends out there that are, are supportive of say the Snyder Cut and everything else, and and want something different out of the movies and you got actors and actresses talking about you know how superhero franchises are destroying movie making because 
they've got a formula that everybody wants. They want to just sit down, eat a popcorn, and if that's what the mass media want, that's fine. But what about us? What about the people that also paid for the tickets for BVS that made the film success? Yes, it was a success, it made money. What about those people? But no, the companies are too busy wanting, no, this film should have made this, this amount. Let's chop it, let's, let's take this guy who has lost his daughter and chuck him out, bring this other guy in who can cheese it up uh, uh, and, and lo and behold, we have a Snyder movement. We, we, we have thousands of people, if not millions of people around the world all wanting something from the movie industry that is available to them but are they listening? No. No. Because in a standpoint, what they want to do is just listen to the majority, give them crap films, in, in my opinion, and, and not be as adventurous as used to be. You go on Netflix, you go on Amazon, and you see all these other great films like The Prophecy. Films that never were released in cinema, but to me, are greater. Are, are greater than these movies. Are you trying to say to me... Star Wars Empire Strikes Back wasn't a better film than the Avengers Infinity War. Are you, are you, is that what you're trying to tell me? Are you trying to tell me that Sinless List wasn't better? No, it's because the majority just like dumbed down movies. But we want, there's a people out there that have a lot of interest in art and artists and want films to be a mixture, a mixture of films. We, we want, yeah, give us the popcorn Marvel movies, yes, but also give us, a, give us a straight faced Batman who kicks ass, that makes mistakes, give us a Superman that's more than two dimensional Boy Scout. You know, we, de we demand something, we demand a Man of Steel mo 2 movie, but don't just totally change them for the sake of those people that don't read comics and don't get it, or who cannot see by artists' integrity. You know, Yes, we should be allowed to hate. We should be allowed to hate. Don't give us this PC politics shit, right? Have you... You know, uh, we should be allowed to be angry at the fact that we have been denied. You know, if, th if this was a small country, or a small city, you know, and everything else, respect the people that are in the minority, respect those views you know, because those views are just as important as the majority because the, ma the majority is what governs people. And those minorities that want a different way of life ain't going to get that different way of life because of those people. So you can call us butthurt, you can call us whatnot, but we will constantly fight until we have a life that we can, that we, we can be happy in. We can, we can see movies that we can be happy about. Because what is Warner Brothers? Warner Brothers should be a, a film company that gives you a mixture of movies. Gives you from everything from wizards to horror to romance to comedies. Right? To cowboys and sci-fi. Give us a mixture when it comes to superheroes. Give us a mixture of darkness and light and comedy and heroes. Don't give us what the other companies are doing. Because that's not how great films are, and just because a film makes so much money, that is like saying every animated movie that makes money because it's cheap is the, is the best movie of this bloody planet. And Justice League would have been just that if you, have give, if you had given that a nod. So no, in my opinion, Endgame, even though it made so much money, is not the best movie ever. Or financial blockbusting movie ever. Because if we go back a hundred odd years, I bet you there's a black and white movie if you're talking about an inflation that made more money than Avengers Endgame. Uh, this is my DC vigilante rant for the day. Catch you later.